we got this news courtesy of MUFCB regarding Ericsson Haag setting to leave United sometime at the end of the summer or sometime in the summer, I'm assuming. For me personally, not sure about you guys, but <sighs> I'm in two minds when it comes to Ericsson Haag. One side of me thinks he does use the injuries thing as an excuse. He goes to it way too often. Because for me, the main issue isn't the injuries. The main issue is, even when he has his full strength team, I don't see us playing a good brand of football that would justify keeping him. He makes too many mistakes in selections. He makes too many mistakes in tactics. He makes too many mistakes in substitutions. He trusts the wrong players. Even the Ahmad Yellow thing is a good example. For fucking the whole season... United fans, myself included, dummies who don't know anything about football. Some of us have never even fucking played the game. We've been saying, Ahmad Yellow's the truth. He should be given a chance to play. How's he being kept out of the team by fucking Anthony? He should be. He should get a chance to play. How's he been keep get, kept getting kept out of the team by Garnacho, who's clearly getting played too much anyway for his age or whatever it may be? He should be rotated in and out of the squad. How's he not playing instead of maybe even Bruno Fernandes in that kind of number ten position? Why is he not contending for the places? And then because of substitutes, because of injuries basically um Ericsson Haag was forced to pick Ahmad Yello. he picks Ahmad Yello and look at how great he's been played these last few games that he started and come on for United he's been fucking phenomenal but we've all known it United fans have all known that this kid is actually good if you give him an opportunity to play but he doesn't get opportunity to play so all those things included make me think that Ericsson Haag isn't the guy for us but I'm also sympathetic to the idea that he hasn't had um the ability to pick a consistent back four he does kind of, I think, overemphasize the need to have a back four to play good football. I don't agree with that. I think there should be a drop off in the quality of football that you play if you don't have to play your second string. But I should still see the same things. I still should see the same patterns. I still should see the same attacking intent. I still should see the same structure, the same teamwork. At the moment, we're just all over the place, especially when the first teamers go. It's almost like the other guys have no idea what they're doing. It's like, don't you all train as a squad? Why isn't, why isn't the whole first team and the fucking guys on the bench and the youngsters all playing the same way anyway? That's how top clubs do it. All top clubs do that. Barcelona do that. Man City do that. Like, Real Madrid do that. All their fucking teams, from the seniors all the way down to the kids, they all play the same way. So that if your kids come through, you, 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 there's not much work needs to be done to kind of get them to play your quote-unquote style of play. That doesn't really happen at Man United. And then the other thing that I don't like about him too is the falling out of players. I personally think that's not the best way to, especially considering how he picks and chooses his battles. Some people get the stick, some people get the carrot, some people get a hard stick, some people get a soft carrot. That for me, I don't like. And of course, the, my biggest pet peeve with Ericsson Hart, because he reminds me a lot of my Sunday League manager I had at ProStar. If you know anything about London, if you know anything about Sunday League football, you know what I about ProStar. ProStar back in the day was almost like a, a pro semi it was almost like a pro Sunday league club. The way we used to care about it so much, like you go to trials, you wouldn't get in, you'd be crying on the way home from the bus. Like it's absolutely pathetic how much we cared back then about Sunday league. But big up Pro Star, big up all those guys that are still around. But back in the day, when I used to play for Pro Star, there was a particular manager that I had a falling out with, like a big beef, which led to me fucking breaking the trophy when we went to a cup final and I wasn't and I didn't play. I, I was sub. And I came on late in the game and I, this shit player played in front of me and I was fucking furious and I got the trophy and I smashed it on the floor. Had a big kind of falling out of the manager and nearly fought him in the change room. Fucking hilarious, right? My little brother still laughing about, <laughs> about it now, but it still makes me angry. But back then, the really issue that I had back then, and I think I've always maybe carried it in my adult age, so maybe I've been scarred, but I always hated unfairness in sport and favoritism because I think sport, it should be the one place where all of that stuff get, goes out the window. It's impossible not for it to go out the window, but I think it should always be about, can you do the job? Are you good enough? Are you better than the next man? Are you better than the next woman? That's how it should be, black and white. Whereas when I was playing the Sunday League Club, the manager favoured the guy that he was picking in front of me. Like he liked him more as a person for whatever reason. We don't need to get into that. So I didn't play. But then what I didn't like was that if he didn't play well, I also didn't play. So it's like, are you punishing me now because you don't like me? Because it's one thing if you don't like the person, you don't want to give them the, the position to play first. Fair enough. You take that on the chin. But if that guy is having a stinker and I'm the next one that plays his position, play me. But he wouldn't play me. He'd just play that guy all the way through. But then in the final, he switched it up and he brought me on, surprisingly. And I came on angry. I wasn't even playing well. I, just, I was just kicking the ball anyway, not fucking giving a fuck. And when we got a trophy, I smashed it on the floor. Yeah, cool. But that, that was only because of favoritism. 
And I know from my little level, from my low, low level playing in Hackney Marshes, right? Sharing a fucking changing room with many fucking dudes and not washing and smelling like shit and carrying a fucking plastic JD bag to the fucking game and shit. I know from my little low level of playing football that if you have favoritism in the club, in the squad, it does breed contempt because other players saw that too and they didn't like it. They'd pull the guy to one side, but he wouldn't want to listen. Other players in the team were also kind of, you know, uh, fighting a good fight and kind of supporting me and saying, oh, it's not fair that you don't play Zenga. Why, do, why don't you play him? Why can't he get a position? Why can't he play if that guy's not playing? Well, blah, blah, blah. So I have no doubt in Man United, because Ayrton Hag seems to favour certain players like Bruno Fernandes and doesn't drop him, even when he's playing badly, Look at Marcus Rashford. There was a period where Marcus Rashford was playing super shit. So shit that the fans had to turn on him. I think in a way, even though Marcus Rashford was the one to blame because of his performances, I think in a way, Ayrton Hag is also to blame for the recent hate train on, on Marcus Rashford because he kept playing him. He kept playing Marcus Rashford, even though he was playing shit, even though he clearly looked disinterested, even though he maybe was carrying an injury, whatever it may be, he kept putting him in a firing line. Then the fans kept fucking giving them abuse, giving them abuse, which then I think bowled over the other day. He was um, on the sub. No, I think he was warming up and some of the fans in the stands were having some words to like, like, say to him. And the thing is, all because Ayrton Hark has too many favourites, he doesn't trust his second squad, which is okay. If you think Bruno Fernandes is the best player in that position and you don't trust the next person on the bench to do the job for you, then guess what? Get another player to do that job. But you can't be playing people every single game, never subbing them, never rotating them, and then being surprised at the end of the season when Bruno Fernandes injures his arm, can't play, pulls up with an injury. You've overplayed these fucking players. So all those things for me are the reasons why I would prefer to just leave Ayrton Hag and tell him bye-bye. Even though he's had extenuating circumstances, he's come under the Glazer ownership midway through, he's then had to change, he didn't have to work with new owners, they haven't really been very encouraging about giving him the assurances in public about whether he keeps his job, they never really helped him publicly when it comes to kicking out players, except for Mason Greenwood, he didn't really get the budget to buy the players that he actually wanted, all of them, blah, blah. there's lots of things, injuries, that he could obviously say as an excuse, but all in all, when it comes to the training ground and the way that we play on the weekends, I just don't see what they do every week. So for me, I'd want him gone anyway. I just don't see it. I don't see it. They spend all week fucking training. We're not in most of the big competitions and we play horrible fucking football. So for that, sayonara, it didn't work. Most likely, whatever clubs he goes to next, he'll probably be a success anyway because he's still a good manager. I think you just need to put him in a good structure and you'll probably be able to get it done. United just too much of a freak show. There's just too much craziness for it to work for a manager who needs help. It's not going to work and uh, at United. He probably took too much on. He probably thought he could do too much and now he's kind of being punished for it and I would prefer if we kind of just split and went our separate ways. But again, what do I know? What do I bloody know? Absolutely nothing.